Uh, we need to move on to our second uh, talk today. Jumbo, a standard spaced approach to introductory Kiswahili. And I'd like to introduce our speakers, Brenda Wariri from uh, University of Kansas or KU, um, John Muchira from University of Kansas, and also Purity Wariri from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for making time to attend our presentation. So we are going to, my colleagues and I are going to share about uh, the project that we are working on. As you can see, the name of the project is uh, Hujambo, a standard-based approach to introductory Kiswahili. So today we're just going to share with you uh, chapter one, which uh, we have a complete draft, draft of, but uh, the layout of chapter one just highlights uh, the structure that the textbook is going to follow. So I'll just give a brief overview of uh, the project and then uh, we'll, we'll look through uh, chapter one here. Uh, this is a collaborative project and we're working uh, with my colleagues, uh, John Mushira, Purity Wawire, and uh, Peter Ojiambo. And the illustrations for the book are being done by uh, Maurice Regulo. And I would, I would also like to acknowledge uh, jo Jonathan Parkins and Katie Ashley uh, from the the University of Kansas uh, OLRC, who are great supporters of our program, uh, of our projects. Uh, they've given us lots of inputs, feedback, and on, on the overall outlook uh, of the whole project. So we really appreciate uh, their input on the project. So Hujambo is an open web-based elementary Kiswahili textbook uh, that has a supplementary uh, uh, teacher's book. So it's intended to provide an overview of Kiswahili language and culture using a pedagogical framework that integrates the world readiness standards of learning languages uh, proficiency guidelines. And it's presented using a communicative language teaching approach. So the goal of this project is just to improve. Uh, we have very limited uh, materials for teaching Swahili. The Swahili language is growing and many institutions in the US are not, not only in the US, but worldwide that embrace or are starting to teach Swahili, but we've not had like very uh, up-to-date uh, research-based textbooks. So our goal is trying to, is to address this gap uh, that is uh, in the field. So the Hujambo is built, is built following the backward curriculum design and is based on the theme of going to study abroad in East Africa. So it's a story based, uh, it, it's, it's a story of two American students going to study abroad in Kenya and Tanzania where they uh, stay for an academic year. So uh, that is the theme. So the theme is going on in East Africa, uh, study abroad in East Africa and the whole textbook is structured uh, it has 10 uh, thematic units, so 10, 10 thematic units around the, the main topic. So for chapter one, we're just going to look at greetings and introductions, so the very, uh, the very beginning. But other chapters uh, covered in the book or other themes uh, in the learning modules include where the students live. So they talk about where they live with their host families and uh, Things uh, they try to describe their yeah the living uh, surroundings uh, the living the cities that they're living in abroad and compare them with the cities uh, at home. They also talk about their daily activities, daily daily routine among people in East Africa and compare them with uh, other cultures that they're familiar with. We have we're going to address uh, the theme of food and nutrition, shopping, weather, among others. So uh, in terms of the outline, each, uh, each unit introduces, uh, because it's based on the backward curriculum design, we, will, we first introduce the desired learning outcomes that reflect uh, the world readiness standards. And then uh, we indicate the summative as performance assessment task for each, mode, for each mode of communication. So I'm going to share with you the outline or the structure in a few minutes. And then stage three is the learning experiences. So these are the learning experiences and scenarios that target the five goals and the standards uh, that are presented using the communicative approach. So the chapters are designed utilizing a, a scaffolded structure that follows the gradual stages of gradual release of responsibility where we present a model 
and then we have activities to follow that so that students can work in small groups and then they do uh, tasks on their own. So uh, currently uh, we have, so this project is funded through the KU OLRC uh, grants and we have to, we're working on it for a period of four years. So we're just in year two. And at the moment we have completed uh, chapter one, but uh, we have two chapter, uh, drafts of chapter two and three, just awaiting illustrations and images but then uh, we should have at least chapter four by the end of the spring. But beginning of fall, we are hoping to have like a whole uh, curriculum that can be used for a, a full semester. So uh, I'm going to just uh, take you through the structure of our project. And uh, like you can see chapter one. So we begin, we are outlining it based on the backward curriculum design. So we begin with uh, essential questions around the topic because we're trying to uh, build learners that are lifelong learners. So we want to begin with the broad, what are some of the essential questions that they have about the topic? And then uh, we outline the desired learning outcomes. What is it that we want students to be able to do by to do and to know by the end of the uh, covering by the time they finish covering um, a module or a unit. So the learning outcomes are based on the, uh, the, 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 the five C's. So we have communication, culture, and all of them, as you can see, uh, listed here. So we try to address uh, all of them. And then stage two is uh, the performance, uh, the summative performance assessments that are in built into the unit. So these are the acceptable uh, evidence of what learners will be able to do. Uh, so through performing these assessments, they are able to demonstrate their knowledge and ability of the content that they cover. And then stage, stage, uh, stage three, which are the learning activities and scenario, just demonstrate uh, what students will be able to do. So the teacher models and then uh, we have uh, several activities that are presented using the communicative framework for students to be able to attain the desired uh, learning outcomes. So this is the outline. Uh, so this is uh, the beginning of uh, chapter one. So students meet, uh, they're going to study abroad in East Africa. So they, they travel, they're, not, uh, they're at an airport in the slum they're being met by their host uh, family. So they greet them, introduce themselves, and then travel to go and meet uh, their, their host family. So the whole unit, so each unit is uh, split into at least uh, uh, 0.5. So we have at least uh, five subsections within a module. So after the model, the model dialogues, we have uh, checks for learning. So these are some of the checks for learning, like uh, because this is a very elementary level, we're using uh, uh, matching questions, for example. And then we have uh, activities where students work in pairs to be able to, so that is the scaffolding, gradual release. They see the teacher's model and then they work in pairs to practice the model and they continue like that. So we have various activities for them just to practice the model. And the activities are situated within the different uh, modes of communication. So for example, this is, uh, this is interpersonal, this is presentational, the presentational mode. So it's just a variety of activities uh, towards that. And then, yeah, so these are just sample, uh, uh, example of activities. Then within uh, each unit or each section, we have cultural exploration because uh, we want uh, to build uh, intercultural competence among, among the learners. So they have to explore, they have to discover, they have to research uh, the East African culture. So they do their own and then they have, LM, uh, they have, um, they have to do cultural reflection. So we pose questions for them to reflect, to research, discover, and try to understand, compare, and contrast their own culture or uh, cultures that they're familiar with to the East African culture. So it's the goal is to build our students' intercultural, intercultural competence. 
And then to follow that, we have uh, the key vocabulary for each unit. So students can have a reference immediately after covering a small portion of content to continue to build uh, their own vocabulary. So that is a complete uh, uh, subsection within module one. This is the second, uh, the second subsection. And the, the structure is the same. So we have the model activities to check for learning and they're going to increase in complexity and, and, and difficulty as we, as we move on. The other thing I wanted to note is we also have uh, grammar sessions between are uh, built within each of the within each of the uh, units. Yes, yeah, so for example, in unit one, yes, yeah, so this is our grammar focus. It's coming in one point three, but as we continue with other units, uh, we find uh, because we, there's so many grammatical elements that we have to address. So we built uh, we put a grammar section within within each uh, subunit. And after a grammar, uh, a grammar, explanation, grammar explanation notes, we have uh, uh, mechanical activities to practice the grammar structure. And then we have communicative activities for students to be able to practice uh, using the, the, uh, the various grammar structures. Yes, yeah, so in a nutshell, uh, that is the structure of our project. And yeah, we also have uh, built in, uh, we also have uh, listening, listening comprehension, listening activities within, within, the, within the unit. So we're targeting all the four language uh, communicative skills, uh, like I said previously. Yeah, we'll leave uh, my colleague Purity to add anything. I may have left out, but in a nutshell, that is the structure of our project. It's still work in progress, but uh, we're hoping by the end of this, uh, by the fall, beginning of fall, we should have at least content, uh, five modules done that can be used to cover a whole semester of instruction. And then by next fall, we hope we'll have completed the 10 modules that will be used for elementary Swahili instruction. Yeah. So I'm going to stop here unless we have any purity. You can add something before we take some questions. Yeah, so I think uh, my colleague Brenda just covered everything that uh, we are doing in this project and we are just trying to incorporate activities and that will and learning strategies that will help learners to be cognitively engaged throughout the whole uh, the whole class time, and also just trying to align uh, all the materials mm -hmm. and all the content that we are putting in the book with the world readiness standards, just to equip the learners with all the learning skills. Like for example, the especially we focus so much on the communicative approach, so they can uh, gain all the interpersonal skills to practice speaking throughout the classroom lesson and also interpretive uh, reading and listening through the listening activities and also yeah, the audio. We also have the audio, so we record separately and we put them in a separate doc document and also presentational speaking. We have activities that let the learners uh, write presentational writing so we give them a task then they can write or we give, we give them a task that will allow them to speak and present to the rest of the class so we just try to equip them with all these language skills uh, throughout the content that we put in the book so i think brenda covered everything that we are working on on the project unless if anyone has any questions we have yeah, about two minutes for questions. Yeah, we have one question. I think Brenda, you can address this. Uh, do you know any Afri other African languages in OER? Yeah, I think uh, we are familiar with there's an OER uh, project at University of uh, Austin, Texas. They're working on a Yoruba uh, OER text, uh, textbook. Yeah, yeah we haven't reached out to them, but we are planning to collaborate and just learn from them what they're doing and to see if we can share and exchange notes with them. 
the other question I see is, are we doing, are you doing all this from scratch or are there any ma many materials you can draw from or link to? So we don't have any materials. Uh, we're doing it from scratch. It is, that's why it has taken a lot of time because we are doing everything from, uh, from scratch. Yeah, we develop all our activities and everything just from scratch. Asmaha, you have a question? Yeah, it's not really a question, but it's a comment. I would just like to congratulate you guys for what you are doing. I'm also teaching Swahili and it has been always been like very hard to have like a, a book that you, we can rely on. So what you guys are doing is really, really interesting. And I'm really impressed by this. So good Thank job. You. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. We have probably time for one more question if anyone else has questions or comments. Well, let's, uh, I will just wanna say thanks to Brenda and Purity for, for their talk and of course, their hard work at creating their own OER and giving it to other people. It's just, it's a really, it's a tremendous contribution to less commonly taught languages um, and especially to African languages. So that we put the link into the Yoruba course that you were refer, uh, referred to, Yoruba Yemi. Mm -hmm. I believe that started out as a largely a Google Doc project and of course she kept developing and she developed also um, YouTube videos and some of those, some of that work she did with her students too. So it's a great example of learning from each other. So our, our next talk. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, I just saw Emily's question oh. about when and where can I access this. So Emily, we're going to if uh, we're going to share this with you. I will ask John Parkins the best or the easiest way to share our materials. Right. Thank you everybody for taking time to attend our talk. Yeah, thank you so much.